The humble loop of track is where many get started in model railroading. We take an in-depth look on ways to make it interesting and as a place to begin your layout, coming up now on JC's Drift Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Drift Track. If this is your first time here and you're looking for advice and tips on how to transform your plastic bottles into something that looks like it belongs on the rails today, then click on subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime there's a new video. So how many of you started with the basic loop of track? Was it around the base of a Christmas tree or on a board under your bed? Let me know in the comments section below. A number of years ago, I remember a friend of mine told me he, that he didn't get model railroading. They had received a basic train set for Christmas as a kid and quickly set it up only to lose interest when they realized that they were just watching the train go around in circles. Let's be honest, the basic loop of track can be exactly that. For some, there is an interest in simply watching trains run and even run in circles, but without the push in the right direction, the danger of losing interest is a concern right out of the box. So what can we do with a basic loop? Well, lots. This video is the second in my new From Loop to Layout series. In the first video, I talked a bit about the background and why I'm doing this in addition to my weathering work. Yet before charging ahead with a complex track plan, I wanted to take a closer look at the loop and why it is a great starting point for model railroading. For this video, I will be working with track that comes in the M1 starter set and V1 passing siding set from Kato Unitrack. The track that comes in these two also combines together in the M2 starter set. So I will have to do some translating here. All of Kato's measurements are in metric using millimeters for the length of track or the radius of a curve. This allows for precision, but if you're not used to metric, converting is not that hard. Divide everything by 25.4 and that's your measurement in inches. So a basic length of track is labeled as S248. This means that the track is straight and has a length of 248 millimeters, which is about nine and three quarter inches long. Similarly, a piece of track that has the label of R248-45 means that it's a curved piece of track with a radius of 248 millimeters or nine and three quarter inches and covers a 45 degree arc. Unitrack has many different lengths of straight tracks and curves, but the one consistent piece is that the arc of all the curves is divisible by 15. So the arcs are 15, 30, and 45 degrees. And this makes planning for curves pretty straightforward. If you're having the track turning 180 degrees at the end of the loop, as long as the combined arcs of the individual pieces of track add up to 180, you're good. The basic loop that comes in the M1 pack and starter kits is about 630 millimeters wide and a little over 1300 millimeters long. That works out to about 26 inches wide by about 52 inches long. The curves are 315 millimeter radius, just over 12 and 3 eighths of an inch, and this will easily handle pretty much any end scale locomotives or rolling stock. Kato makes curves that are both wider and tighter than this, so it's right in the middle of the pack. As you can see here, I'm demonstrating how quickly the M1 starter loop can be set up and run. Using my dining room table with one leaf in, I did this setup, ran a short train, and then took down the track in eight minutes. So in this sense, you can have a workable loop and start playing around in a very short period of time. But this is only the starting point. So let's go downstairs to the train table and you can see that on a hollow core door that I have a bit more room to play with. But this is the space I'll be evolving into. Right off the bat, one of the best ways to combat the train going in circles is to break up the loop so you never see the whole thing at the same time. By using scenery blocks, backdrops, terrain or tall model structures, you can break the loop into two, three or even four different scenes. In this clip, I'm just showing how this can look by adding some makeshift blocks while a train is running on the same loop. Notice how different it looks when you can only see one side of the loop. One way to think of a model railroad is that it can be an animated diorama. For some in the hobby, having trains running through scenery is exactly what you're looking for. 
even if you're looking to do more with the layout with more track, thinking of your layout as a series of scenes will go a long way in creating the illusion of a larger railroad. So even if all you have is a basic loop, by putting a scenic divide down the middle, you can create two different scenes for the train to run through. Still, the one major drawback to a single loop of track is that you can only run one train. And unless you do a little juggling, chances are you're going to be running it in only one direction. So the next thing to do is adding a passing siding. The first variation set from Kato is the V1 passing siding set. But if you already have the M2 set, you will have all the pieces for that. All you have to do is disconnect the straight track from one side of the loop, move it over to the other, and then put the pieces together for the passing siding. This comes with two number six turnouts, one left and one right. Kato N-Scale turnouts have built-in switch motors that you can hook up to switches and cluster together to control it. When arranged together, the loop extends to almost 2,000 millimeters or 78 inches long. The passing siding can either move to the outside or the inside of the loop. If put together stock, the siding and the main can each hold a train that is about 40 inches long. Adding a passing siding makes it possible to run two trains on the same track. Now you can't run them at the same time, but you can run them one at a time without having to take the other off. While that may not seem to be all that interesting, remember that on the other side of the layout, there's the illusion of a track that has trains traveling in each direction. Not only that, the siding can start to be used for operations by having a small industry where cars can be delivered to or a passenger station. With the Unitrack set, one option could be to have a passing siding on each side of the loop, either by picking up a second V1 set or buying the pieces separately. The V6 outside loop set uses 348 millimeter or 13 and three quarter inch radius curves, while the V5 inside loop set uses a tighter 282 millimeter or 11 inch curves. You don't necessarily have to have these loops connect to each other, especially if you're doing something like a passenger service layout, but Kato makes a double crossover or a single left and right crossover tracks that can easily move trains from the inner to the outer loop. In my case, I am not going to be double tracking my layout, although in truth, as you can see from the loop that I've settled on, a significant amount of it does have it. I wanted to have some operational challenge and an intentional choke point around what will be some industries. However, as you can see from some of these pictures, a double track mainline is very easy to set up and you can let two trains run at the same time. So here's a bonus tip. No matter what kind of track you're using, a helpful piece of advice is to add some interest to any loop of track by offsetting it to an angle. This has nothing to do with operations or track planning, but rather it's a tip from diorama makers. If we approach our layouts as a type of diorama, then anything that we can do to add a little bit of interest is always helpful. Especially if you're working with a loop of track, angle it even if slightly so it doesn't run absolutely parallel to the edge of your benchwork. There are a few ways to get around this, and sometimes it is unavoidable, but by placing things even at a slight angle adds a little bit more visual interest. And as you can see with this loop of my portion of the track, I'm trying to follow my own advice in the final design. The next video in this series, we add a little bit more interest by adding some destinations along the loop and even get into some operational basics. So while this series isn't quite my usual weathering fair, I thought that this could be helpful to anyone getting started in the hobby. Plus, it actually has me building my own layout. If this is something that you find helpful, then please click on subscribe and the little bell icon that appears if you want to be notified anytime I put out a new video. If you click on the show more in the area below this video, you can check out some of the helpful links either on social media or on my Amazon page that features some of the track sets that you see here in case you can't find them at your local hobby shop. I've also included some links to the HO Unitrack sets as well. So thanks so much for watching. Good luck and may you keep on track.